I think we're all, all here. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the City of Englewood's uh, study session. This is Monday, August 6, 2018, and we have a full council tonight. And our first item up on the agenda is eight to other agencies discussion, and our city manager, Eric Keck, is here to lead us through this. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. <clears throat> uh, this particular item has come up actually the past couple years, actually three the, since I've can recall, wherein council has basically asked themselves the question whether or not to continue with providing funding for not-for-profits and, and uh, groups that provide services to our citizens. And so in anticipation of that again happening, uh, the mayor and the mayor pro tem ask that we bring this forward this evening for council discussion. And just as a refresher, uh, the past three years, the city council's budget has been $20,000 for being able to be dispersed to not-for-profits. The process is as follows. Typically in the month of October, the beginning of October, the application process is open for not-for-profits and entities that wish to, to submit an application for grant funding do so. And then typically in November, or the, depending upon how it falls, late November, early December time frame, council has a study session and sits down and evaluates each of the proposals that's been submitted and determines how much funding to provide the entities. So for example, last year uh, you had $52,500, I believe was the, $52,200 was the request from essentially uh, 15 uh, disparate not-for-profits that serve our citizenry. And council ultimately decided to disperse the $20,000 of funding uh, to the to a select group of those um, entities. Same thing happened in 2017 and 16. And so, uh, the question has, has been raised as to whether or not this program uh, truly is meaningful enough to those entities that uh, request and is, ask for this assistance. And so this evening, the uh, purpose of this particular study session on the topic is to allow for the council to, again, examine whether or not they wish to continue. I will say this. I have programmed this $20,000 into the city council's budget again for fiscal year 19. That's part of what's in the budget proposal that's before, uh, the, will be before the council uh, for this next year. But again, uh, this is kind of a timely topic in that uh, as we're trying to complete this, you have that opportunity to determine whether or not to continue with this, with this level of funding. Thank you, and thank you for the information that you put in here with the comparisons. Council, what are some of your ideas on this? Councilmember Sierra? <clears throat> well, me personally, I was uh, wanting to get a, additional information on who is being aided by the uh, $20,000 and just a little bit more background on, sure. on, on what it's being used for. Yeah, I'll give you a, uh, I can tell you a little bit about that. So, uh, for example, last year, well, the last couple years, the Arapahoe County uh, Metro Mayors and, and uh, Community Youth Awards Program has been a recipient. And that particular program, it goes into the schools and seeks children or youth who have done exceptional things to overcome exceptional circumstances. You know, one a single parent or no parents and kids who are leading their home, uh, working as well as going to school and they have a program where teachers nominate them for awards. And so uh, the last couple of years, the city has uh, de designated about $200 of funding each of those years. Another example is the Arapahoe Philharmonic. It is obviously exactly what it sounds like. It's a, uh, it's a Philharmonic symphony that has requested funds, and they do uh, concerts in the schools and help youth with uh, learning uh, about music and, and getting involved and interested in pursuing music as a, as a hobby, if not for some, a career. The last few years, the council has given $100 to that. Another entity that has received significant funding from the city of Englewood uh, has been Brothers Redevelopment, and that particular entity is a not-for-profit that helps uh, homeowners, owner-occupied homes that have issues with he keeping their homes warm, safe, and dry. And so this company goes in, and the grant and aid to, the, to that entity has been around $2,000 for the last couple years. And uh, that uh, group goes in and, and for eligibly and income qualified homes, they work through the city as well to uh, go in and provide insulation, new windows, uh, things of that nature that help those homes stay warm, safe, and dry. 
So food banks, for example, are, are huge recipients as well. So Cornerstone Food Bank, for example, got $700 the last two years. Uh, the city has also given money to the Inglewood Veterans Memorial Day uh, request, and that has been a recipient the last couple of years at around the $500 uh, level. The Historic Preservation Society has also been a recipient of funding uh, from the city. And then, of course, some of the, the, the biggest recipients have been the Family Tree, House of Hope, which is a uh, shelter for uh, women and children, uh, as well as uh, the Integrated Family Community Services, IFCS. Uh, they've been huge recipients as well at around $4,000, both the House of Hope and then the ICFS, IFCS, excuse me, about 4000 And then TLC Meals on Wheels. And uh, that particular program is very, uh, has a lot of uh, clients here in Inglewood. I know that several of the council members have gone out and, and helped to deliver uh, as well as I have. And it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic organization. <clears throat> and they do, they do great work for some of our uh, vulnerable population that can't get out of their homes. So that is, a, is an example of, of some of the entities that have received aid. We also do counsel, I need to enunciate this too, we also have uh, some groups that don't ask for funding, they ask for in-kind, which has a cost to it obviously from the city. So for example, the Special Olympics of Colorado uh, during the uh, inclement weather periods, fall and winter and sometimes in the spring, they desire to actually take their their youth athletes to the recreation center and we comp their use of the recreation center. For example, their athletes that swim or their athletes that run, they use the track. So sometimes it is an in-kind request as well, but preponderance of the funding that has been requested uh, actually is hard cash checks that are sent to those entities. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilmember Martinez. Uh, I just want to say thanks for bringing this up in advance of our budget discussion. I think it's a really a good time. Uh, I would like to keep our funding at twenty thousand. Uh, the the uh, groups that receive funding from this really provide a valuable service to our community that we as a city don't provide, and I think it's it's a nice um, enhancement uh, to the services that we cannot or do not provide. So I would like to keep it at twenty thousand. Councilmember Cuesta. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, City Manager Keck. Does a municipality need to contribute in order to receive the services from the program? Uh, no, sir. However, we've, I have heard from a couple of, as a matter of fact, one of them, they just met with me last week, and, and they're going to, I believe, come this evening to speak, and that's the Integrated Family Community Services. They uh, believe very strongly that communities that they serve, they would hope that they would, the cities would reciprocate. But there isn't a requirement that, they, that we provide funding for that. Obviously, there's a desire, and in many instances, a need. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem Russell. Um, I, I struggle with this in, in spending taxpayer money to give to charitable organizations. I think they're all worthy causes. <coughs> um, my husband and I give a lot to different charities. And we vet the charities we give to um, because I don't want to give money to an organization that has huge overhead and spends very little on the services that they get. And I think that um, because we are funded by taxpayers that most of those taxpayers can choose whether they want to give to charitable organizations. Um, themselves and so I think that um, while I am not saying the these organizations that we've been giving to and perhaps others that would apply um, they're doing worthy causes but we are spending somebody else's money if it was our own money um, I that would be a different issue so I am in favor of disbanding aid to other agencies altogether <coughs> Councilmember Member Barentine. <clears throat> I think one of the problems that we end up having is that once the city participates on this level that we have somewhat of a partnership as to Council Member Quest's kind of concern. I think that that becomes a problem because we don't have any control over their organization or how many people they're serving in Inglewood. <clears throat> and so if something were to happen with one of these organizations then we, we, we end up with a, a, a tie to them. There are a lot of worthy charitable organizations. And I hate to put the city manager in a position tonight to only name a few of them, 
all of the people that, all of the organizations that have ever applied to us uh, provide some kind of service, are, are worthy, do amazing things and amazing work. And then we become the arbiters of who's, who's the winners and losers on that. Occasionally there have been some ties to some of these organizations from people on council I would certainly like while I share council member um, Mayor Pro Tem Russell's concern that maybe we should stop this practice altogether because we are dealing with taxpayer funds and then we have these organizations come and thank us. We didn't give them the money. It's not our money. So I, I've always felt somewhat uncomfortable about that as if they are beholden to the city as if then they have to you know, develop a relationship with the city. It's, it's not our money. Um, but I struggle with how we're going to pick these organizations and if we go forward I would hope that we would not ever put ourselves in a position again where if any of us are on any of the boards or are um, involved with any of the organizations that we not, would not give that money. I think it would have been better served for your question Councilmember Sierra to have provided a list of the funds that have been done in the past. Right. And, and to who and to, and to what amounts and then some of the issues that I'm bringing up I think would be more apparent. Um, like I said, I don't think we've had any organization regardless of the um, involvement of any council member on them that wasn't worthy of the money that they got. But we start having that kind of picking and choosing who's favorite. Part of the argument has been that the council that the city does not do social services. The city doesn't do social services because we're not supposed to do social services. We don't function that way. That's not the purpose. We're, we can support the county. We can um, support some of the programs coming in. Similar to like the Brothers Redevelopment, we have other programs in the city that we might be able to go ahead and partner with them if we think they're a viable uh, resource for the city and that's through the community development rather than doing it through this vehicle. Um, uh, there's certainly some other opportunities for volunteerism that we could do, um, that we could organize. I think the in-kind services, they don't actually cost us anything to let people go ahead and go to the rec center. Basically, it doesn't really cost us anything. It's not like they would have come otherwise. They don't have the money to, so unless we do that, and we wouldn't have had them there. So it's not like we're losing a customer. Um, so some of the in-kind services, I think, are, are a reasonable thing to do. But in this vehicle of this pot of money that we kind of dole out, um, I think that that's difficult. And then we also have people that we don't give to. And we have very worthy organizations, and then we say no to them as if we've made a decision that they're not contributing to this community, and that makes me uncomfortable as well. So I think there are other vehicles for us to go ahead and help certain organizations that we think have done if we believe have done a you know a disproportionate amount of service to the community that we really think that a partnership on another level would be a good idea but I don't think this is the proper uh, vehicle to do it so I would share with uh, the mayor pro tem that I think we should consider not doing it uh, through this vehicle and maybe find some other ways for the ones that we think uh, would help in programs that are more fitting with what a municipality uh, should do before I get to you, Council Member Wink, would you would it be helpful to people if we had you, um, Manager Keck, put up the actual financials that you're reading from? Would it be easy to access something like that? Well, this is one of those times where I wish we had the Elmo document camera yeah. because I have a <laughs> hard copy, but not a uh, not a soft copy, oh, not okay. a soft copy. Okay, I can hand this around if you'd like. Sure, I don't need to see it. So, but others that might, Council Member Wink, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Manager Keck, what percentage of applicants on an annual basis um, are funded? You know, that's an interesting question uh, as well. So obviously uh, last year we had over 20, 20 applicants and I believe only 12 were funded. So there is a proportion that never gets funded. Um, and there are some that continue to put in applications that haven't ever been funded, but sure. it's, uh, yeah, it, it varies. Okay. And, and your your office or your leadership team evaluates these based on the criteria you put forth. Actually, the city council evaluates them. We so, okay, good. Krista do. Krista Gravy will put up on the city's website the application. She aggregates them and will scan them, and then we provide them to the city council at a workshop. And the, typically, that's how it's done in the past. 
and then the council comes prepared after reading through all the applications and makes those deter they makes those determinations. They're really the thing that we drive, and I think we've tried to improve over the last several years since I've been here with that is tell us how many people are served, tell us how many of those people served are from Englewood. And some can articulate that very clearly, some cannot. And I think that's what's some of the criteria that's been utilized in the past to help designate those funds. Sure. Thank you. Well, I think <clears throat> this funding is a nice, nice to have and nice to do. My, the only thought I have um, is that given the difficult place we're in with capital funding, um, could we divert these funds this time around, maybe revisit it, make sure we re revisit this next year? I don't want to take money away from any location, but I know that we're hard pressed to make some of the uh, funding up here for those dire capital fund capital projects. So I'm not, that's a thought. What if we were to, to apply these funds this year? Um, if, if need be, if we get to that point, I mean, our next conversation is going to right. round this out. But, but that's my thought right now. So are you, are you suggesting they would go towards the flood areas that we've just experienced? Capital funding, kind of? and that, that's one piece of it, okay. right? Um, before I call on Mr. Member Questing, I want to make a couple comments. I, you know, I've done this a number of years now, and I have to admit that at the beginning I was really surprised the city was doing this. I didn't get it. Um, and then as we went through applications and started talking to people who received it, it is, it is really a small amount of money that most of these organizations get, but in a sense it is a very strong voice, I think, from us to say thank you for being in our community doing things that we really cannot do and that Arapahoe County also will not probably be doing. And so for me, over time, I have developed a, a, a different perspective. I would like to see it stay. Um, I would not be against entertaining if it needed to be used in a certain way this year differently than in the future. But I do think that um, there is a place for cities, obviously other cities have done this as well, uh, to actually do some kind of partnerships in ways that help, in a way, it's more of a thank, thank you to some of these and, and a contribution that says we're behind you and thank you for what you're doing in our community and let us know how to be of, of help. There are lots of organizations that we do IDAs with or bids with or whatever that you know, we've got an agreement with them and they could do something bad and we could get connected to that as well. So, it, I mean, I, there's risk with everything. Uh, so I'm, I'm not as concerned about that. I do, I would like to, if we continue on, to look at the application again because I think there were some things from last year that some of us wanted on that application and I can't remember what they were and whether we gave you the feedback for that or not at the time. But I think it would be a helpful thing for everyone to see that there were there were questions. And I don't remember if we asked about overhead or not in the last one, what the overhead administrative costs are, which is something I would address Mayor Pro Tem's perspective. But I'm I'm still in favor of it because of it's a small amount of money, twenty thousand, very small amount of money, um, for the kind of services that really deal with some of the most um, challenged and um, I think vulnerable populations as well as helping prevent some things from getting worse in our community. So that's my take on it. Council Member Cuesta, you did have your hands up. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> do you know how long Inglewood has participated in this program for? How far this dates back? Uh, at least a decade that I can Holy find, can find uh, information upon and, and the, the amount of money has diminished over that over that period of time. I think it moved to Twenty thousand dollars in fiscal year uh, sixteen, uh, and it was in the thirties when I first arrived here, and I could go back and see where it used to be sixty. I, yeah, it was. I think when I first started, it was forty, fifty thousand. Yeah. So we have pulled back, especially during the years of the recession. We really pulled back, but then we and we refocused. We thought, let's deal with those that we know are dealing with people just on the edge, um, and and I think that's the kinds of organizations that we see now, more so than Santa Claus Club or things like that. As a point of information, in 2003 when I went on to the council, I believe that it was, I believe it was a, a lot more than that. I think it was close to $100,000. It was a lot of money. But you have to remember that prior to Cinderella City, we weren't in debt. So they, they cut it down significantly and cut it down to the 60000 because there was some concern even at that time that we're dealing with taxpayer money and we're being generous with somebody else's money that gave it to us to run this 
the city. So it got cut down significantly when it was cut down to the 60,000. That is my memory of it. <coughs> I'm not going to be held in a court of law to that, but that's what I remember. And then there has been, since 2003, discussion and concern, and probably before that, but there's been discussion and concern about it every year that it comes up. Thank you. So I think that, uh, oh, Mary Portem. Um, I just, in <clears throat> response to uh, Council Member Wink's concern about capital projects, I, I do believe um, that it would be wise to address that issue. And sitting in the Budget Advisory Committee meetings, they over and over say every little bit adds up. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that it would be wise. It's interesting on this list that staff gave us that Greenwood Village in 2008, uh, be, prior to that, they budgeted 35000 a year. But in 2008, they cut it out altogether, and they have never reinstituted it. And that is probably when the recession um, right. was in full swing. Um, also, um, Lone Tree uh, d does not. They used to solicit nonprofits, but they stopped around 2014. Um, I think some of this is, is a habit that we get into. Um, but I do believe that we actually have had some things happen in the last couple of weeks that, that reveal definite needs in our infrastructure. And we need to start cutting places where we, where we can. Thank you. One last thing I, I did want to say, and I, I didn't get a chance to ask the mayor of Greenwood Village why they actually cut, but I did talk to one other council member who thought it was because of the recession, but also because they didn't have the same kind of nonprofits nor the same kind of vulnerable populations that some of the first tier cities have. Um, I don't know if that's, who knows what their conversation was, but um, I do, yeah. So we need to give some kind of direction tonight, right, to Manager Keck? It, it would be helpful, uh, obviously, you know, as we continue to unroll the budget uh, over the next several weeks of this month in August, uh, it would be outstanding to have that type of feedback so that if we wanted to reappropriate those funds, you could do so uh, to whatever project makes sense. And capital, obviously, is an area, as I'm going to explain here in a little bit, that does need uh, some additional funding. If you could stick about three more zeros at the end of that, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but no, yeah, it would be nice to know and at least get some direction uh, as to where things stand. If I'm counting things now, I see three that are against and, you know, some that are undecided here, so. Another idea that I don't know, and we haven't ever talked about this. Well, maybe I mentioned it once in the regular meeting, but I am really concerned about how we are earmarking our marijuana tax money. Right now, it just goes into the general fund. We don't see any impact from it. Cities that have been really smart about that kind of a tax have earmarked it for things that impact the community, and that is one way we could we could decide to fund some of this too, is to start doing things that make a difference in our community around mental health, around um, poverty levels, around um, you know a number of issues that we could say are related that could be seen as appropriate for that kind of funding. So let's take a uh, sort of a, a temperature of where are people on this? You want more information? I'm not sure we can kick it down more than another meeting, uh, but what? where are you all on it? Thank you. Member Martinez, I think we know. Have you changed in your view at all? No. Nope. No? Okay. <laughs> Council Member Cuesta? I would withhold the money this year. I think that there's maybe more direct applications that we have. Uh, 20000 is a lot, as people have spoken with. Uh, another interesting component, just from my own personal perspective, is I look down the list, um, some of those charities, just in my own head, seem more um, worthwhile than others or more worthy in their direct impact to people. I'm sure each person could look at that list and come up with a different ranking sure. of those charities. Mm -hmm. And that alone tells me that um, how are we picking winners and losers with that money? So I think there's more direct applications, and I don't think it's, I shouldn't be the one making the decision on where taxpayers' monies go when it comes to charities. Just as a point of information on how it was done is we all did rank them and gave comments of why we ranked them a certain way, and then we just came to some kind of uh, an agreement together on how much <laughs> each would get. And it's changed every year, depending on, sometimes things have changed over the year that we need to, ref that's why we refocused on food and um, 
yeah, more sand food bank type stuff. And one more moment, and one more note, and maybe it's all or nothing, but for instance, the Special Olympics looking to use the rec center. That's something to me it's a little easier in that it's mm -hmm. not uh, it's not money out of the bank. Mm -hmm. um, and that those ones I think would be uh, easier to entertain if we were somehow able to um, participate in those um, and not some of the others, more of the in-kind where they weren't. You'd be open to in-kind solicitations. I, those ones are more appealing to me, yes, too. Councilmember Wink? I think we should... Uh, repurpose those funds this year and see how it goes. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem, you obviously said no. It's just for the year or you want to repurpose them or you were done? Um, I, well, for right, now, for right now, for right now, that's the decision yeah. we're making. Next and year we'll talk about it again. Okay, so. Council Member Barentine. I, I, I agree with Council Member Cuesta that I, I've never been happy with picking the winners and losers and as this council picks, the winners and losers are picked by the majority of the council. And so there are always people that are not going to get funded and that, that does leave some hurt feelings. Um, and then some discussion and debate on who's worthy or what's going on or who's better. Um, but I do appreciate Council Member Wink's suggestion and that is that we have just had something very devastating happen that's hit our community very directly and maybe that should be repurposed for this year. Some people are having a hard time hearing you. Maybe pull the... Oh, so I, I do apologize. Um, I said I agree with Councilmember Wink. And I believe that the issue that happened to us is very obviously in our backyard and in our home here. So the suggestion to repurpose it for this year to go ahead and take up some of that cost and maybe kind of look at some ways that we can address the issues of the people in our community that were hit... Um, I have always felt uncomfortable with this. I continue to. I like, uh, I like your suggestion for this particular funding, and I would agree with Council Member Cuesta. $20,000 is a lot of money, and I, I don't think that's a drop in the bucket for us. So I do think that we should um, be aware of that and that we're kind of doling that out on the, on the taxpayer. So I, I would agree with doing that for this year. And then I would really appreciate if this council would consider uh, really whether we should just go to a, a system of whether we're looking at organizations and finding a home for them in some other funding that we have in the city and get rid of this all together and so that we can stop having this conversation every year. Um, but uh, we'll at least have it one more year, so I guess. Council so. Member Sierra. Thanks. <laughs> um, I would prefer to keep it in the budget, um, but it would be an item just based on the discussion that's, you know, the next topic that we have. Uh, it would be an item that I would look to slash just depending on where we were at, so on a year-to-year -year basis. All right. It looks like there are only really two of us that are, so we've got enough to go with a, a plan for this year that's different. Yes. Thank you, uh, mayors and mem members of the city council. I appreciate the feedback. Uh, we'll persevere forward by moving that funding and you'll have $20,000 to uh, appropriate to a different, different uh, project for this next budget year if you shall desire or put it in the unassigned fund balance. Sorry, I was, I was going to say some more right before you started, but um, I, I want to make clear that I don't think this is a small amount of money. I think every penny does count. All money we spend here is taxpayers' money, whether it's for this or anything else. We're making decisions all of the time to use our money that all of us contribute. And so I take that seriously. Um, and I'm fine, we'll move forward with this. I think there are other ways to do some things this year possibly, uh, but I don't want anyone to think that I don't think $20,000 is very much. <laughs> I also think that $200 to some organizations is a lot of money and to other organizations not very much. It's what it says more than anything else. So I'm glad we finally had this conversation before we got in a budget crunch, which is what we were worried about. And so you have some direction. Thank you. Second item. Yes. Uh, Kick, or Mayor, Manager Kick gets to stay here. We're doing a budget overview, informational budget overview. Yeah, thank you. Uh, tonight, we're going to just do a, a brief overview of the proposed fiscal year 2019 budget and capital. Again, it's an overview. It's meant to uh, kind of be a teaser uh, for you to preview of coming attractions. As you'll hear me say multiple times this evening, uh, next, next week, the 13th, will be an in-depth study session related to our capital projects, and you will see uh, the projects that are being promulgated, put forward uh, in their dollar figures, as well as what we can't do. Uh, 
So tonight, again, is just a high-level overview. Just a, a few facts um, for tonight. So proposed fiscal year 2019, we have sources of 49,552,529 with uses <clears throat> of 50,529,162. And again, I know in previous years, the source and use kind of got confusing to folks and saying, hey, you're out of balance. Uh, actually, by taking monies out, you see the footnote here, there's a million dollar transfer out of the capital projects fund for identified projects. And so this is an important to understand that that's appropriating funds that, again, from your unrestricted net assets or your unassigned fund balance to help with uses for projects. And that's not uh, unusual for, for cities or entities to do. So if you look at our current fiscal year, our sources are 49 million, expenses around 48 million. So you can see that there is a growth in both uh, sources and uses for uh, 2019. So diving down into this a little bit deep, more deeply, uh, here is a breakdown of our cost, constituent costs, so you can get a, a flavor for what really drives the overall budget cost. Well, we're a service organization, and so the majority or the preponderance of our funding is going to be personnel related, and that's about $29.4 million. Commodities, about 2.1 contractual services, $15.7 million, capital expense, uh, and this again is not just capital projects, these are capital expense for items that, that are needed to, to make things go, parts, uh, maintenance pieces, tools, uh, $773,000. And then debt service, $1.6 million. That number in and of itself, I believe, is the debt service for the certificates of participation uh, yes. for this building. Uh, this is a general, general fund general fund expense. So you, that's where you get the $49.5 million in total expense. And then you see where we have an operating transfer out of a million. That gets us to the total use of $50.5 million. And of course, we're going to talk a little bit more why we need that a million dollar operating transfer out as we progress this evening through this slideshow. Point of information. <coughs> yeah. Where is, which fund is that million dollars coming from? That's the unrestricted net assets. That's the unassigned fund balance for the city. So that's the general fund fund balance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> so what are some of the assumptions that we're taking going into this year's budget? Uh, number one, we're seeing a sales and use tax year over year increase of 6.9%. And you're saying, well, where did that number come from? Where does that, how does that transpire? Well, council previously, I believe we sent, I know we did, we sent you this electronic copy I love this report. You probably all haven't read this cover to cover uh, like Kathy and I have. But this report enunciates or elucidates where the state, state's economists believe things are going. And so uh, for them, for sales and use tax, there's, their increase was actually 5.2% uh, 5. 5. for sales. But of course, when you couple that with our use tax, and our use tax, again, is applied to construction projects or people who are building something paying a use tax, that's where we derive this 6.9% figure. And again, it's predicated upon prior performance of the city, where we've seen things go over the last two years. One of the things that you all have brought to our attention as staff, or at least asked us to look at, was a more accurate accounting of, of our revenues. Uh, the last couple of years, we've been very fortunate to have years wherein our revenues were higher than what we anticipated as well as our expenditures being lower than what we anticipated. And so you've asked us to drill down a little bit deeper and say, can we be a little more exact so that we're not seeing these overages in revenue, for, if you will, and then underages with spending. So we're, we're doing that. And we'll talk about some of the constituent members of where we see sales tax uh, increasing as well as we go along. So all of our other revenue year over year increase, we're seeing about a 1.1% increase. And other revenues are fines and forfeitures. So, for example, uh, when somebody gets a ticket or they go to court, and again, this is a community not like some of our surrounding communities, and I won't name any names like Sheridan or Morrison, um, <laughs> who are Citation Nation members. We're not. We don't do that. But we do see that uh, revenues from that are going to grow slightly from this year. And then expenditures as well. Um, and again, this is predicated upon looking back over some trends we're expecting expenditures to increase year over year to 4.7%. Again, you're asking, where does that come from? Where are you coming up with 4.7? Well, if you look again to this report that basically calculates the cost of commodities, fuels, things that you and your own household utilize, energy, 
uh, we're looking at those same types of increases as an organization. We're not immune to things that go on in the greater economy that drive our costs as well. And so 4.7% is part of that, uh, that figure. So looking beyond, so we're looking 2020 and beyond, um, the state is taking a much more very tight look at where things are going to be growing. So you start to look at the end of 2019 going into 2020, you see a, a cooling of the economy more so than we have now. So you're asking, what's driving this cooling of this economy right now? Well, we've been on a meteoric and stratospheric rise with the, with the economy. Two things are happening that's slowing that down. Number one, uh, we have global uncertainty. Again, today the stock market was up, and then, it's, then it kind of recessed a little bit again. Uh, I was surprised that defense stocks didn't rise more uh, over the ebullience or of our uh, friends in Iran who are upset about coming tariffs and, and trade restrictions as well as economic sanctions. That has an impact on us. There's all kinds of little places in the world that you've never heard of. Uh, these, any country by the name of has the ending of Stan is usually causing us problems. And so um, that, that's one thing that hurts us. But also the Federal Open Market Committee, the FMOC, otherwise known as the Fed, continues to increase the interest rates. And so if we look at where we've been, so you go back to 2013, the Fed rate was 0.25%. The Fed rate today is 2%. And so with the federal rate now at 2%, that's what they lend money to banks for. This is like MBA 101. So they're lending money to banks at 2%, and then they have a, the banks, of course, have a markup. And if you were to go acquire some debt today, for a 30-year debt, you're looking at 4.5% or about 4.5%. 8% APR. 15-year rate right now is about 4, 4.5%, uh, uh, 4.4 quarter, excuse me, with 4.37% APR. So that is causing people to slow down their purchasing as well because people don't want to take on debt, even though these are historically low rates. 4.5% is still historically low. Many of you may recall, even I recall, when I was 8 years old in the 70s when Jimmy Carter was president, I remember some friends of my parents, they got a loan for 18% and they were happy. We're at 4.5% right now, so we're a far cry from that. But it's still starting to cause a cooling. And we're seeing that too in our real estate community right here in Inglewood where the real estate boom, everybody was putting their home for, up for sale and, and getting, the, you know, getting some crazy numbers uh, for small square footage. That's cooling off a little bit too, predicated on there's too much inventory and the interest rates are higher and people who are marginally looking at whether they can get a loan and substantiate it or stopping to, to do that. So we're seeing that. It's going to continue. Um, we understand that the Fed, who's already done two rate increases this year, might have a third or a fourth increase this year to go to 2.5%. The Fed rate might be at 2.5%, and that's what's driving the, the decline, if you will, in the forecast going forward. So look at this. I know it's kind of small. You might have to take an eye test to look at this, but if you look at where we are right now, the, the uh, January fund balance of 18, the fund balance opened up at about 14.1 million. We had estimated sources this year of 49 million with estimated uses at 47, and we're forecasting that the fund balance at the beginning of 2019, January 1 of 2019, will be 15.3. Our estimated sources for 2019 are estimated to be 49.6. Uh, uses at 50.5 with a fund balance. Again, this is target. This is all hypothetical, being that 14.336 million, and that uh, is calculated by that $976,633 difference that we're taking out to, to balance the balance this budget going into 2019. Okay, so this chart you've seen many times. We've uh, kind of even enhanced it thanks to Mayor Pro Tem Russell asking for the Tabor Reserve to be split out. It's important to note that that is a part, the Tabor Reserve is a part of the unassigned fund balance, but for tonight's purposes, we broke it out even further. You can see where we are right now with our estimated um, unassigned fund balance being right where it is, a little bit, 15 million or so. Uh, but you can see that for 2019, there's a decrease. The dotted line uh, is our reserve policy. That purple or blue line uh, is our reserve policy. The reserve balance, that's the, the long-term asset reserve and the unassigned fund balance is the, is the red line, which we have as 16.76% of your total general fund. You can see what's happening, again, over time, that diminishment. We've been able to stave this off, again, 
the, the, the fact where we, we can't dip into our fund balance because we've had higher revenue years and lower expense years, but that's not always going to be the case. It has always been the case since I've been here, but I've been here during rosy times. We haven't had a recession. We haven't had a global recession, and, and that's, you know, the conditions are starting to look, look ripe for that. When the short-term rates are higher than the long-term rates, long-term interest rates, that's where things flip, the yield curve flips. We need to be worried and keep looking at that because that's, that's coming, folks. Yes? Um, is, is it going down, like, from 2018 to 2019 because of the million dollars we're taking out of the NSA? So we are spending our reserves. Yes. Yep. Okay. That's to do capital projects. Keep that in mind. We're, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get. We'll get there. But you're right. It's decreasing because we're adding. We're taking the million from the reserve to do that. Right. And so that's. We are planning to diminish our reserves. Yep. That is below. a conscious decision. And we could choose not to do that. You could. You would choose to do fewer capital projects. Mm -hmm or cut some other services or programs that we'll talk about on the 27th of this month. But you do have the authority as council to make those types of policy decisions. Thank you. Thank you. So um, what improvements are we going to see? So again, we put this budget together looking at a couple of things. Uh, number one, obviously available funding, but and the direction to, from our citizenry from the, the budget workshops was, hey, we really like the programs and services you provide today. Please continue those. But also, please do more capital projects because we want new playground equipment in all of our parks or whatever those things were. So when we put the budget together, we also utilized the City Council's strategic overarching themes to do so. And so we're going to go through a, a quick review of what those are right here and what we're doing to, to, to relate to those. So under strong infrastructure, community parks, uh, one of the things that we're doing is we want to add a water resources uh, position. And this position is not going to require any funding for the general fund. We believe that this position can actually be substantiated by reducing our spend with outside consultants. So, for example, we expend between an engineer as well as a law firm about a million dollars to look at our water rights every year. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. It's a big investment that we're protecting, too, at $50 million. That's what our net portfolio of water assets and all that's allegedly worth. So uh, to do that, we feel like we want to have greater control over how much that spend is, and we want to have that expertise in-house, and we want to be able to articulate how can we leverage these assets. Since I've been here nearly for four years now, I keep hearing people go, our water rights are our best asset, our greatest asset. But what are we really doing beyond selling some of that asset to... Uh, Centennial Water that serves Highlands Ranch, what, how are we leveraging it other than protecting it? And we're, it's uh, something that we talk about, we protect, but we don't do anything with. We need to be able to clearly understand the assets that we own. I couldn't tell you the, the assets that we own right now. Um, I know Tom Brennan can try uh, to do so, and, and we'll, you'll all glaze over like I kind of do. And, uh, but we need to be able to clearly understand that. We want that expertise in-house. The other thing that we want to do is develop a long-term revenue plan for capital investments, especially our parks and our utilities. We heard time and time again, not only from our citizenry uh, that we had at the budget workshops, but just people who kept stopping by to say, please, please invest more in the parks. Please do things that are going to generate more value. And the things that people value the most in our community are our parks. We have to be honest. The parks and then the safety, of course. But especially here, we need to make sure that we are expending some dollars or looking at plans that expend dollars to keep those assets in the shape that they are today and provide people with a high quality experience when they, when they do attend our parks. And again, a good news story from, if we have a good news story moment, uh, a couple weeks ago we did hear from Arapahoe County Open Space that we received the Jason Park Playground Grant. That's awesome. That's roughly $250,000 now that we don't have to expend out of our general fund or the a parks trust fund or the uh, lottery funds that we get conservation trust to actually put in new playground equipment so we're able to do another park but we would like to even go further and, and address more but we need to get a plan first and then also with our utilities we want to have strong infrastructure there we've just recently seen um, how we had a, an issue with some of our infrastructure our stormwater infrastructure uh, both in town and out of town and Sheridan again that we need to, to figure out a plan to make sure that's that's hardened 
I'll speed up because we have 15 Actually, minutes. Actually, could I get a point of information? Uh, yeah. The water rights, is it 50 million or 500 million that they're valued at? Well, right now, our total, it's about 500 million. Yeah. Yeah, it's a half a, half a billion dollar asset. Because I would agree. I, I actually heard the number as over a billion before. So if we could That's our water. That doesn't include wastewater. So if you put the two together, that, that's about a billion No, just dollars. the water right. Yeah, just the water If we could get a little bit more information yeah. on that prior, thank you. Yeah. Because I, I heard a different number specifically mm -hmm. for water as well. Okay. Thank you. And that's exactly why we want to research this with somebody else. Okay. We do have 15 minutes yep. left. It would be great if we had a couple minutes in between. <laughs> yeah, I'll sprint. So historic past, smart future. We want to, you know, continue to install sidewalk ramps to ensure all residents have mobility. We're looking at things we can do with our transportation system, specifically our signals. We know that in certain areas of town, people want it slower. In certain areas of town, people want it maybe a little bit so it doesn't go faster, but facilitates more traffic flow. We have an old system that needs to be updated, and uh, our new public works director is working on that. And then we also want to make sure that in this particular area that we're using the, we're driving the best use of the civic center area that we can. The trustee sale, I guess, is back on for sometime this week, Wednesday, yep. Yeah. And so that's the Weingarten portfolio, and we want to be able to work with whomever that successor landowner will be to look at redevelopment and vibrancy and activity here and not just some of the same old, same old. So what are we doing for safe, fun, active, engaged? Well, safety is a huge issue, and we heard this very clearly as well. So we're proposing to add an additional dispatcher to support our communication system. We're uh, adding additional fire inspector. Right now, um, we have about... We have over 3,000 businesses that need to be inspected in Inglewood, and we're only able to get to about 22, 2,300 of them. And so we need to have another inspector to come on to add that safety factor so that we're not getting into a situation where we're, we're not hitting all of our businesses on an annual basis. We are proposing to add an additional police officer in the, in the budget. Um, this is also very important. We found that the outsourced social worker that we've been granted 16 hours a week from All Health Network has been unbelievably helpful and unbelievably uh, just positive for us and our, and our team and our impact team. And we want to continue that. And so we are asking for uh, funding to continue that program, but at a higher level. We want to take from 16 to 32 hours. And so that delta of funding is what we're seeking. It's about $29,000, I believe. That's included in this budget. So we'll have twice the hours, twice the coverage, and twice the hours now in 2019 with a social worker working with our police department and our most vulnerable population. We also want to continue to invest in engagement through events and publications. And then also, uh, lastly, just as important, we started some work on Broadway. We want to continue that work on Broadway, not just the 34, or 33, and 3500 block, but others to improve the attractiveness. And so there's some funding in there to replace some lighting. There's funding in the budget to replace some, some street furniture that needs to be replaced as well uh, throughout the entire corridor. Sustainable natural environment. Uh, we certainly hope in a few weeks that the council will support the biogas project, but we're also looking beyond that as well as to what other sustainable energy types of programs can we get involved with. You know, Renewable Connect is great. Um, we recently had the commercial opening for that. We were able to get the wastewater treatment plant in but beyond that, the capacity was so full, so the interest was so high, we weren't able to get any of our other facilities in, into that program. But that's good news because the wastewater plant uses 2.2 million kilowatt hours a year, and that's 2.2 million, hopefully, uh, when we get the contract back of renewable energy they're using. But we also want to look and see if we can collaborate and partner with the private sector to leverage our land that we have that's not being used for solar and or wind. Uh, fiscal sustainability, again, um, we are looking to, to look at programs that are going to protect our infrastructure. We want to revitalize facilities because that's an investment that you've made and our residents have made back, you know, in the 70s and 80s and 90s in our facilities. We want to uh, freshen up our recreation center by redesigning the entry, for example. That's a huge project. It's about a million and a half dollar project that uh, we, we support, and that's also going to help replace rep and repairing sections of that roof. Uh, we want to uh, look at our investment here at the Civic Center. That also has problems. I know uh, some of you were here the night of the uh, storm on the 24th, and we had indoor water features in our building that I never thought existed, and uh, that's not a good thing. So we need to look at the roof there and also look at the aging freight elevator 
other elevators and our uh, obsolete HVAC system that's either on or off. It's just no in between. And then we also want to help guide the council uh, to examine fiscal sustainability options for our future. Organizational excellence, again, improving technology. We want to improve AV and communications, not only here in this room and in, you know, throughout the community, how we communicate, but uh, specifically what can we do to communicate better with residents. We want to take uh, and offer people the opportunity to pay online or from an application on a telephone because that's where people are going these days to pay on an app. We want to update the municipal courts and recreational software uh, that's, again, more interactive and more user-friendly. And lastly, document management. We want to be able to do that to offer transparency and hopefully eliminate the need for core requests. People can get the information they need uh, online. So capital budget. Here's what we're not able to do, and we're going to get into this in greater detail next week, but we're not able to fund Cushing Park. That's the number one park master plan uh, project was Cushing Park. There's no funding for Pirates Cove until 2024. So we're pushing projects out in order to, to fund about $5.4 million that we'll talk about here in a, in a few minutes as well. And there's no funding for Little Dry Creek Plaza, the plaza that's over here, aside from securing the trash grate over the, over the entry that goes into the uh, very deep and long storm drain system. Uh, some projects have to be reduced or deferred. So for example, alley paving and beautification is going to every other year. We can't fund it in 2019, it'll be every other year. The broadband study that was brought up is being pushed out to 2021. And then facilities and operations funding is reduced to $290,000 uh, for 2019 from its current rate of 400000 So that's a significant decrease of what we're not able to do to, to do maintenance in our facilities. That's all of our facilities that require that other than utilities. So capital, um, again, we need unrestricted fund balance still required to, to do projects in 2019. So for example, a major project that we weren't able to do without that additional million dollars is the, is the roof repair for this building, the $2.1 million. You know, and again, we're going to get into this in greater detail next week, so I won't belabor this too far. Uh, but here's a quick calendar of, of our next steps of what we're going to do. So August 13th is a uh, presentation to capital on capital to our council and our community. On the 27th, we're going to be diving into the operating programs. Uh, it'll also be on the 27th that the community will be able to see the line item detail on OpenGov, our financial portal. It's important that uh, that will be made available. And then, again, preliminary budget books, the hard copy books uh, that, that you all receive, you'll get that on September 7th. And so as we start to make any changes with direction, uh, we need to make sure that we can bake it into in, into the budget book as well as that what will be heard by the public at the public hearing on the 17th. So um, I, I know it's been a blow through on this and I apologize for that but I guess we're, out of, we're running low on time. What I will say is this, there's some major themes. The biggest theme for this year again is we simply do not have adequate funding to address all of our capital needs. We had over 15 million dollars in requests for cap projects in 2019 and we're only able to fund 5.4 million of them. This is a consistent theme for us. Um, the other thing that's a theme was that uh, every project that was incorporated, in the, you know, was incorporated because it's critical to the operations of the city, critical to ensure that we're maintaining our infrastructure th and making sure that it's functional, make sure that it's safe for the public. Um, you know, funding for park improvements is critically inadequate. We've heard that. We know that from our citizenry who've come at budget workshops as well as to the dais to say, council, Please fund Romans Park or whatever that might be that, that's there. Um, enterprise capital investment, we also learn this and know this, and you'll see this coming up as well with our enterprise budgets. Enterprise capital funding is not keeping need uh, up with needed improvements as well. And of course, enterprises are being driven by new regulations, new requirements from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, as well as the EPA. And so we have to increase our revenue streams there, and the way that's paid for is through our rates. We'll be having rates that will be brought forward uh, as well as part of the operating budget, so you will see where that potentially is moving towards. Um, lastly, again, we've, what we've tried to do for 2019, aside from continuing the programs that we have and ensuring that we have a high quality of, of uh, level of service for all those things that we do provide today, is to try to augment that or supplant that with additional resources to ensure that we're dealing with it. And as you saw, 
the majority of the positions that we're adding are public safety related to ensure that we're still dealing with the safety of our community, which aside from parks and recreation is a huge, huge concern from our public and we believe that adding those positions will help, help with that. Be happy to answer any questions for you at this point in time, um, but uh, again, stay tuned. There's more to come on the 2019 budget. I have one quick question. It goes back to um, slide number 12, where the last statement is guide council to examine fiscal sustainability options. So, yeah. what are you planning to bring forward on that? Are you going to give different different ways to cut, as well as different ways to start thinking? Yeah, about and revenue? so part of that part of this process again needs to be a dialogue where we we have some additional study and look at different options. Again, I'm not here advocating any taxation. I'm not. I know that keeps getting thrown out there. The city manager wants to tax us to death. He doesn't. What he wants us to do is have a conversation about what do we want to continue, what, what can we live without, and we have a community-wide conversation about what does that look like, what does it mean. For a community of our size to provide the level of service and programs that we do at the revenue levels that we do, it's phenomenal. I mean, I am proud of our community for what we have and what we're able to do and the vision that the forefathers and mothers had to provide some of these facilities are, are fantastic. But we're getting to the point where if we don't invest back into them to maintain what we have, we're going to have problems. And there's no way I'm going to be able to cut operations to be able to fund the levels of capital necessary to ensure that these facilities are sustainable you know, moving forward. And so we might have to make some difficult choices. Every household does. Every business does. And we're a business now that we have to make some decisions about programmatically. So yes, Mayor, um, we will have some thoughts and ideas uh, with that, but again, our ideas are insignificant uh, compared to what you and your constituents believe is going to be acceptable. Thank you. you know, we're making choices all the time in this show. So, Council Member Sierra? Yeah, I'll keep this quick since uh, we only have a couple minutes, but what I'm looking for in, the, in when we speak next is just some of the assumptions that we're making. Um, currently, you know, 2018, we're forecasting a 3% growth in sales and use tax. Why does it jump up to 6.9% in 2019? Um, just what the real dollars are in terms of the increase in the benefit cost, yep. it's 15%. I know that that's a huge chunk. So what's that real dollar calculate out to? Okay. Um, and I believe that may be it. So, yeah, it's just like the percentage breakdown between or a percentage change between 2018 and 2019, basically. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Mayor Perch, I'm wrestling. Well, you'll be the last one. Okay, and I'll make this real quick. Um, are we going to be talking about the police budget part of it? Because my question is, when we were told that we were down five officers, are we adding one more person to that? So bringing our five officers up and then adding one more officer. So, But will we be talking about that again before we, we get to the final? Yes, yes, we sure can. And, and you heard that we were five down. The chief made three offers. I believe they've all been accepted. And we have two more that we might have been making offers to as well. So that, that issue may have already been resolved. But yes, we'd be adding another one on top of, on top of the five that, are, that were down. Okay. So her question, are we going to be bringing that back to talk about? We will, okay. but I will say this. We're trying to get away, again, from zeroing in on focusing on one department over another. What we talk, this is the whole philosophy of community-oriented budgeting or community goals, is we no longer talk about, we talk, you talked about winners and losers earlier tonight. What we don't want to have is public safety wins, parks loses. And so when we start to talk about positions and adding, we don't want it to be a some department wins, some department loses kind of thing. We, we, we believe very strongly that every department adds to, adds to these, but yes, we will have a conversation about levels of funding and, and staffing. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Council will meet next door in about five minutes, okay? So whatever break you need.